okay so good morning everyone and uh, welcome to class i would like to uh, welcome all the students uh, online on campus and uh, later on the e learning students who are going to view this uh, session so let's pray and let's get into uh, what we have for this morning let's pray heavenly father we thank and praise you for this day we thank you for your presence in our lives we thank you lord for your word uh, father we uh, believe that uh, you're helping us lord learn um, uh, lord uh, line upon line precept upon precept lord to just build ourselves up in you day by day lord with uh, all that uh, you're speaking to us through your spirit lord even today we pray in the name of jesus that uh, we will be built up uh, father that you will give us clarity uh, about your word and uh, enable us so oh lord to walk in victory that you have given to us through the cross uh, we bless you we honor you in jesus name we pray amen amen okay so we're talking about faith and uh, we said we have to build our faith we have to nurture develop our faith because um, faith is something that can grow exceedingly that's what we saw in the last class so there is an opportunity for us to um, take it from whatever level it is at in our lives or whatever measure and increase it so we saw the different ways in which we can increase it mainly or primarily it's through the word of god because the word of god is the agent that makes faith to grow so we saw all those um, uh, meditation techniques you remember we talked about what is meditation meditation is intently focusing on the word of god and uh, taking the word in inside us then we saw how one must um, also visualize one must uh, confess okay so these are all things that we have looked at so we said contemplation visualization and confession of the word and the other aspect of applying the word is to consider it like a seed so the, when we sow the seed the plant comes in the same way we have to sow the word of god and the word of god will develop or it will grow uh, and uh, that growth right it it is what will develop the faith in our hearts as well and we saw that when we sow the word of god there are results which we are going to reap from it it's like a farmer it's like a harvest um and uh, that's the way we look at it uh, and we said that when we nurture our faith it must be based on the word of god it must be based on the victory of the cross it must be based in the identity that god has given us so these are all ways in which we can engage our faith now today we will talk about another very important aspect about faith which is confession okay confession or what we speak about the word that god um uh, god has in in the logos or um, the written word of god or the word which comes to us by inspiration we said that such a word is known as what is it known as logos is the written word of god what is the inspired word of god or the spoken Re rema rema word correct so rema word so both rema as well as logos um we are required to make that our confession and our declaration so we will try to understand why um, you know god wants us to do this how to do this uh, and you know maybe some other questions that you all have we can address those matters so now something for us to recognize is that when we have faith um, we must not just keep it hidden okay uh, yes we all have faith in our hearts and we keep saying yeah i have faith uh, yeah, and uh, that's about it but we'll see today there are two aspects one is to speak the faith another is to do according to our faith you got it so just because we are saying we have faith it's not going to be helpful faith is there in the heart yes it is there but there are two more things for us to engage in one is confession second is action okay so we'll look at both of these today 
so having faith in our hearts and uh, keeping it inside is just one part of uh, what is necessary or important but the other one is to express right to express or to release the faith uh, which god gives to us so how do we express this faith so i've been saying that we will now look at confession or declaration now when we receive salvation what does the bible have to say how do we receive salvation two things we do yes we we confess our uh, sins right um we acknowledge that jesus is is christ okay uh, what else what else do we do there are two things that are you know uh, the bible says you do that okay romans 10 Nine and ten. Just look at those those verses. Romans chapter ten, verses nine and ten. What does it say? That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation okay so what are the two things there diksha you will give me the answer try first we have to confess our mouth that lord jesus is okay our lord and second thing we have to believe in our hearts yes right so two things i'm saying okay even for salvation first we have to believe then we confess then what does it go on to say because it is with the heart that one believes right and with the mouth confession is made so when we carry faith in our hearts there is also the aspect of speaking the faith or confessing the faith but what is confession okay what is confession confession is what is it declaration okay but what is it we accept okay we accept we confess um so when we look at the word of god there are two places where you know you really um uh look at this word confession one is at the place where it talks about accepting christ so in that place we just said you know if you if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the lord jesus you will be saved the other aspect of confession is when one has sinned or when one has made a mistake right so when one has made a mistake uh, um what what does the bible encourage us so if you go to passages like um, 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 through 9 or if you go to passages like uh, james chapter 5 verses uh, 14 and 15 both of these say that uh, if we confess our sins to god so when we make a mistake we confess to god okay but there is also the aspect of uh, confess your trespasses one to another we should even be in a position where we are humble enough to share our mistakes with others two two kinds of confessions what are they one is we confess to god when we make a mistake we are supposed to confess to god okay second is we in some cases i told us in the last class you know don't go around confessing your sins to the whole world because that's not what it means it means that in certain situations it is necessary to make confession to the right people maybe you have wronged a person or uh, there is an elder that you must confide in and you must share so in an environment of trust 
all right you you have to go ahead and share what has happened so that is confess your trespasses one to another so this is the confession that we all understand confessing our sins confessing um, that jesus christ is lord and we think that confession is just that but there is a little more to this word called as confession so whenever we see a uh, a word uh, you ha you have the subject hermeneutics this year this semester no so you will have it in the next semester so in that subject what we will learn is when we have the bible right how do we study the bible with certain tools okay so with certain principles the right way of interpreting so one of the things that we have to do is we have to go back to its original language when we say confess we'll have to check what does it mean because today we are uh, we are speaking in a different language english but they have written it in another language so we go back and check in that language so the greek language is where we have this word uh, uh, so you know where like in romans and all where we use it so when you pick out that word confession and you uh, check okay you check the meaning of that um, word in greek language it comes from a term known as homologia okay that's the original greek word homologia and what does it mean so uh, it simply means homo is same okay homo is same uh, lo logia or logia however you want to pronounce it is to say to say so uh, homologia or confession is you say the same thing you say the same thing understood everyone so what is confession confession means to say the same thing so what is the same thing that we are supposed to speak we've already understood one kind of confession for salvation and um, you know to receive forgiveness of sins to confess to one another that we have understood now we are talking about confession of faith got it so what are we talking about now confession of faith so when we talk about confession of faith we must understand that we must say the same thing same thing as what same thing as what okay what we believe okay god's promises god's word correct so we need to believe god's word god's promises what god says about us that is one aspect you believe what else we are supposed to do we are supposed to confess and what is confess say the same thing okay so we are supposed to say the same thing that the word of god teaches us and that is an expression of our faith that's an expression of our faith now this is not something new that you know jesus came up with uh, only you know when he was there and uh, in the new testament and all of that where he suddenly thought okay let me teach them about speaking their faith no you go way back right to the old testament even there god had given instructions to speak in order to uh, walk in the blessings that god gave us so can somebody turn to joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 one person can turn to that and another person can please turn to deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 11 to 14 so we look at these passages and then we'll go on to look at other passages Anyone? Anyone at Joshua one eight? Yes. Joshua chapter one verse eight. 
this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success okay so uh, it's like god is giving a key for success to joshua and the people so how to be successful god is speaking and he's saying this book of the law what does it say diksha this book of the law shall not depart from your heart mind what does it say from your mouth okay that's great so this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth so notice it does not say this book of the law shall not depart from your heart because anyway it's supposed to be in our hearts but it has to go to the next level what is that it's in the heart but it should be in the mouth this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth you shall meditate on this day and night so how will it come to my mouth only when i am meditating isn't it so uh, it's quite challenging okay let me be honest uh, there are many scriptures that you know i can say by heart but then i still get confused because sometimes it's a little difficult to to uh, memorize it unless you've meditated deeply on it so i really appreciate like when i see people who can who can just you ask them a question they'll say it with a scripture and the proper scripture uh, because you know one thing which is required okay i'm still not that good at it but i would love to be uh, but you see meditation every word when we unless we meditate right on every word it becomes a little challenging for our mind to grasp it and for it to get into our hearts and then you know when we speak from that place of a uh, deep meditation of the word it just flows right it just flows and that's the way god wants it to be for all of us and god told joshua that this book of the law should not shall not depart from your mouth meditate on it if you meditate on it it will come it will come to the mouth okay meditate on it um, day and night and then it, he goes on to say in this way you will make your way successful so how to be successful god gave a key to joshua he said if you are a man or a woman who meditates in the word of god okay to the extent where the word is in your mouth you got it it is in your mouth you will make your way successful so even back in the old testament what is god teaching us speak your faith don't just hide your faith inside your heart yeah i have faith in my heart very good but confess the faith confess your faith speak your faith that's the lesson which we learn um uh, you know even in the old testament now let's look at deuteronomy 30 verses 11 through 14 deuteronomy 30 11 to 14 yes for this commandment that i command you today is not too hard for you mm. neither is it far off it is not in heaven that you should say who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it neither is it beyond the sea that you should say who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us but uh, that we may hear it and do it but the word is very near you it is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it okay uh, can you go back to the beginning uh, nelson just read one small slowly for this commandment that i command you mm. today is not too hard for you neither is it for, far off mm. it is not in heaven that you should say who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it neither is it beyond the sea that you should say who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it okay. but yeah go ahead but it is 
near but you? the word is very near you. It is it's in your me. mouth and in your heart, so that you can do it. Okay, so in uh, the commandment that God gave Joshua, He's telling Joshua, uh, it's actually not so difficult. Right? So what is God saying? The commandment that I've given you, uh, it's not like it's so high up that you have to go to heaven and then, you know, you have to do something and make it happen. Right? Or uh, he says it's, it's not far away from you. You don't have to go anywhere to get the word and do it. But where is it? Where is the commandment or the word that I've given you? It is near you. It is near you. It is in your mouth. And it is in your heart. Okay, so this is what God has done. God has put His word in our mouth, in our heart. Can it be closer than that? Tell me. It's so close, isn't it? God is saying, My word is not out there where you have to do some adventurous trip and go find the word. You know how you have all these movies where they make it difficult for you to find the treasure. So you go find it, bring it, then do it. God's saying it's nothing like that. My word, it's near you. How near is it? It is in your mouth, in your heart. That what you should do it. Okay? So in this way, what God was actually telling us is we must have faith in our hearts and the expression of that faith should come through the words that we speak. Okay? And we've already said, confession means say the same thing. What is my faith? That uh, we, we look at it, you know, that I'm victorious because of what Jesus has done on the cross, I'm victorious. That's my faith. So what should I say? What should I say? If I believe I'm victorious, I should say that I am victorious. Got it? So say the same thing. Whatever the word of God teaches us, the word is very near us, the word is in our mouth, the word is in our heart, we are supposed to speak it out. And that's the way we express our faith. And there are many passages here, you know, that talk about it. I think we look at it because uh, it's all so important. Uh, but I will uh, refer you to an APC publication by the name Speak Your Faith. Okay? Speak Your Faith. We have it in uh, English. Uh, I think the Hindi copy is also available. So you can just pick your copies, those who are on campus. It's right here. Collect a copy. Uh, it will give us more information about um, what this whole confession uh, is, is about, you know, as far as our faith is concerned. And uh, for our online students, you can get the PDF. You can even have, there are um, uh, audio, audio books available, right? So you can listen to the books uh, in the audio format as well. So uh, we are working on that. So I request us to please make an effort, whichever way, right? Hard copy, uh, PDF, audio file, listen to it. And this is very essential for our Christian faith. Okay, uh, to not just know the word, but believe the word and speak the word. So let's look at these foundational passages. Let's go to Romans 10 verses 6 through 10. And then Hebrews 3 verse 1. I want us to be a little more enthusiastic to quickly search it out and be ready to read it. Uh, same thing with the online students. If you found it, please unmute. You can read it. Um, I said Romans 10, 6 through 10. Can I read it, sister? Yes, yes, sister. Get through it, please. Yeah. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But uh, what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation all right so um here paul writes to the romans and um, you know paul is is actually reiterating what was a uh, shared earlier uh, where uh, we've seen isn't it in the book of deuteronomy where god said my word is near you my word is in your heart it's in your mouth you just have to speak it so paul is reiterating that and he's saying the same thing to the romans and he's saying look god's word is very near you and then he goes on to talk about how to receive salvation that is you believe in your heart the lord jesus um, and you confess the lord jesus that's the way that you will be saved so this whatever we shared earlier whatever we discussed earlier the same thing paul is instructing to the romans okay now let's move on we'll move on to hebrews 3 and verse 1 it's a, a very interesting uh, scripture hebrews 3 1 yes therefore holy brothers you who share in a heavenly calling consider jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession okay so it says here jesus christ the apostle and high priest of our what does it say confession the apostle and high priest of our confession so where is jesus now we discussed about this last time where is jesus right now in heaven sister sitting okay. at the right the hand of the god the father okay thank you thank you sister getrud so jesus is in heaven sitting at the right hand of the father and what is his um ministry right now intercession he is our great high priest he is our high priest forever but what does it say it says jesus christ the apostle and high priest of our confession it simply means that when we uh, confess in line with god's word what does jesus do he backs it up but if we don't confess in line with god's word jesus has nothing to back up you understand so every time we make a confession of faith it's like um you know it, it it's like jesus agrees with what we are saying and he is the high priest of our confession and our confession um you know in that sense is acceptable and very very powerful so jesus stands in agreement with our confession and that's a confidence that we should have that every time i'm confessing in line with what the word of god says the word of god says about me the word of god says about um you know a certain truth jesus is agreeing with me from heaven he's agreeing with me and that is why our confession is so powerful okay so jesus christ is the apostle and the high priest of our confession say the same thing now imagine if i say something opposite okay uh do you think jesus will agree if i say that um, uh, oh there's no abundant life uh, life is only tough it only gets harder you know sometimes they share all these theories of uh, i don't know who it was some murphy's law or something and all say it only gets worse <laughs> right so when you speak things like that do you think uh, jesus is going to agree no thumbs up for that right from heaven so uh we want the agreement of a high priest to what we are saying so then we must say what he says say the same thing then he'll agree with us as the high priest right he will back it up and imagine what can be better than that jesus saying yes wonderful go for it you know go ahead i'm with you regarding any matter so he is the high priest of a confession which means he's in agreement and he backs up our confession so that is why our confession is so important okay so now let's move on look at some of the other passages here uh, we have uh, hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14 414 since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast our confession 
okay so again um we are being told that jesus backs up our confession so we must not give up you know think about noah we discussed about noah as an example and we said that uh, the flood was going to come and god chose him to build an ark uh, but throughout people did not believe what god had spoken to him so he went about doing his work and he must have had lot of um uh, temptation to give up because people would have said what is a flood we've never seen a flood what are you talking about it's not going to happen right so at some point he could have been under pressure to give up and say yeah maybe i didn't hear from god maybe there is no flood maybe this may be that he could have changed his confession but he didn't he held on to the promise that god gave him and you know he must have said to himself yeah definitely god's going to do it so i'll hold on to it think about this lady in mark chapter 5 uh, there is a crowd okay and jesus is walking in the crowd uh, but suddenly you know jesus asked the question who touched me okay uh, and then he says oh uh, like uh, the healing virtue power has gone out of me and the bible says immediately the flow of uh, blood stopped okay so she received a miracle but if you just look at that passage mark chapter 5 uh, i think it's verse 25 28 i don't know there it says that that lady when she was going near jesus she said to herself meaning she had a confession right she had a confession what was that she said to herself if i may only touch his clothes i will be healed so she believes that if she touches the clothes of jesus she will be healed but what is she is saying is she saying even if i touch his clothes i don't know maybe i'll try you know if she speaks like that then what she's saying is not the same as what the word says or what the truth is or what she believes isn't it so she spoke in line with what she believed if only i can touch his clothes i will be healed okay so we learn from these people they didn't give up they didn't give up and that's what the writer of the hebrews is saying he's saying look you have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens the lord jesus christ hold on hold on to your confession don't let it go if god has promised if that is the truth it will happen you will see the fruit of it just because things get tough you know just because uh, you know the people around or the environment or the situation uh, says that uh, it won't happen think about the blind man you know uh, we we see in the bible there's a blind man crying out to jesus son of david have mercy on me what did the other um, people there do on the street they said keep quiet keep quiet stop screaming keep quiet imagine if he didn't continue to call out to jesus right because if he did not hold on to his faith that yes jesus can heal me then what happens you know satan will always try to stop stop our faith stop our confession right but uh it's only those who don't give up you hold fast to your confession keep saying the same thing maybe we are still experiencing some weakness in our body or pain or you know discomfort and we feel uh, i'm believing god for healing but it's not happening uh, okay let me give up don't give up that's what the writer of the hebrews is saying hold fast to your confession say the same thing you don't feel it right now but say the same thing because remember what did we say there is the fact and there is the truth we must believe in the truth fact can change truth cannot change right so that is why hold fast to your confession it's important to have a good confession uh, have you um, you know have you seen like at church we put the announcements there is a vision the vision of all people's church is to be salt and light in the city of bangalore to the nation and to the nations so uh, in a way right the vision every sunday the vision is being repeated that is true but also it's a confession it's a confession like uh, you know uh, to the nation and to the nations uh, like for the first time i came to apc i was uh, actually amazed because 
I saw the name of the church was All People's Church World Outreach. Okay, and I was thinking, where is World Outreach? You know, it's a church, yes, but World Outreach. But you see, that's the vision, that's the confession, that's the declaration. You keep saying the same thing because God said so. And then what happens? You've got a journey with God, and God makes it happen. He makes it happen, right? Things begin to take place. Uh, but we must hold on to the confession. We can't just give it up because we don't see any anything happening. You can't say, oh, forget it. Right? Hold fast to your confession because Jesus will back it up. As long as it is the truth of God's word, we said logos, rema, speak it. Okay? Speak it, confess it. Um, let's let's move on. So same, um, same thing in Hebrews 10, 23. It's again encouraging us to hold on to the confession. Um, do you want to read Nelson? Yeah, 10.23. Hebrews 10.23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Okay, great. So um, we must hold on and not give up on the confession because confession of faith uh, it's likely that there is going to be a journey of faith. So we've already talked about the fact that it won't be so easy, right? It's not so comfortable. Uh, but it will happen and we need to journey with God. Now, coming to confession, let's also go back to our um, passage, Mark 11. We've spoken about that. You remember Jesus, he um, spoke to the disciples. He told them, have faith in God. And we discussed that particular passage. Now let's see something here. Look at this. Mark 11, verse 22 to 24. I will read it. Um, in 22, Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Verse 23, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever, what does it say? Whoever? Are you looking at your scripture? Yeah. Uh, Matthew, Mark 11, 23, whoever s says to this mountain, right? Okay, says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he, whatever he thinks or believes or says, right? Here also it, it, it has says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So Jesus is giving us a key. It's This passage is about believing God. Okay. Before this, what happened? Before Jesus said this, what happened? Anyone in that passage? Mark 11. Good, yeah, fig tree. Who said that? Okay, fig tree. Correct. So Jesus looks at a fig tree and there's no fruit on that fig tree. So he curses the fig tree. Okay. The next day, Jesus and his disciples are walking by the same path and they see the tree. The tree has dried up and the disciples are amazed. They start asking Jesus, Jesus, remember you cursed this tree and uh, it's dried up? So Jesus is like, what is there to be so amazed, right? Let me teach you how to operate, okay? Or how to work your faith. So it's actually a lesson. Jesus is mentoring his disciples because he wanted them to realize the power of confession. What did Jesus do before he said this? He himself spoke to the fig tree, right? He cursed it. Then what was the result? It dried up from its roots. Okay? It dried up from its roots. So the very next day, you see that, you know, it's, it's all gone. But the moment Jesus spoke, that faith, that authority was released. And the fig tree was affected. So that is why Jesus is now telling the disciples, I want you to do this. Exactly what I did. What is that? If you see a mountain, okay, 
nowadays mountain is not just a mountain isn't it mountain can be fear can be a mountain anxiety can be a mountain doubt can be a mountain right uh, or let's say some sort of a financial difficulty can be a mountain uh, some opposition can be a mountain we face all kinds of mountains so when you see the mountain what are you supposed to do say to the mountain speak to the mountain right you speak you issue the command of your faith to the mountain then what will what will happen the mountain will be removed and cast into the sea if you do not doubt in your heart but believe that the things that you say will be done okay two things you believe in your heart and whatever you believe speak okay so this is something that we must all practice i try to practice it all the time all the time and i have some um maybe weird stories which i don't know if i can even share here uh, you know because of the uh, recordings because there are times that i have really exercised my faith and spoken spoken to like uh, stuff things around me and i have actually seen the results okay because it's true it's real what jesus is saying here is real uh, and i'm not trying to say you know be be weird or be spooky spiritual no no don't don't be wherever it's essential you can speak like you uh, have you noticed even in the ministry of jesus sometimes he spoke he spoke to sick bodies right be healed be made well um so we can even issue commands to the body or parts of the body um or uh, some system in the body be made well uh, become normal something like that so will it work what is jesus saying it has to work if you believe if you speak right uh, your faith and if it is in line with what god is wanting to do so many wonderful things happen i have heard of stories of um, you know people who have um, commanded the weather people who have commanded uh, you know uh, the rain to come and uh, uh, i don't know if i told you this there was one particular person there was a forest something like a forest fire and it caught on to his uh, his field okay all his work he's a farmer so it caught on to his field and uh, even though they had called the fire services and everything uh, it was too huge to put it off and he didn't know what to do at that time and he just started praying he said god i want you to protect my field i don't want it to be burnt and at that time he realized speak so he he called out for rain and it just poured right and the whole fire just uh, was um, put off uh, because of a huge rain that happened at that time so you know it it's not something which is um theory it's very much practical so i encourage you i encourage you uh, speak your faith speak your faith if you believe in your heart if you confess with your mouth right you will see those mountains moved okay uh, but we must exercise our faith just keeping faith in our hearts uh, is good but the expression of faith is what jesus is teaching he's teaching his disciples why are you so amazed you know what i did i believed and i spoke to that fig tree it dried up you do the same thing if you believe in your heart you speak to the mountain it will be uprooted it will be cast into the sea okay so that's a little bit about our confession so um yeah we can maybe we can just pause now if there are any questions anything i'll i'll answer and then we'll uh, stop for a break i thought there'll be lots of questions or maybe they'll come up right in the next session so let's uh, talk about all the questions that you have um, we'll go for a break let's come back at 11 or oh, 11 or 10 10 o'clock sorry 10 okay see you then thank you